Well, good morning, Beaver Dam. It is Pastor Owen coming to you live from Beaver Dam and Rousey's Chapel. And today is uh, June the 8th, and it is Thursday, and it is a, oh, it's a hazy day, but it is definitely a beautiful day here in Beaver Dam. And good morning, Karen. Good morning, Dick and Nancy. Glad to see you guys are joining us. So if you happen to be joining us live like uh, like they are, I invite you to uh, drop us a line there in the comment box. Let us know that you're out there. Let us know uh, what's going on in your part of the world. Um, it's also a great place to, to put your prayer concerns and your praises, those places where you've seen God active in your life. So uh, this is a time where we've been gathering Monday through Thursday to read some scripture, scripture together to spend some time in prayer with the scripture, and then uh, hear some uh, musings from John Wesley based on his sermons from a daily devotional that we've been using. Um, we are gonna take a break after today, uh, not only for the weekend, but also for uh, a good chunk of the summer. Um, the summer is upon us, it's gonna get busy, and uh, there are lots of things going on in the life of the church that, um, that we just, uh, sometimes we need to take a step back and, and rest a little bit. And this is one of the ways we're going to do it. So you might see some uh, devotion times pop up here and there. Uh, maybe from sp some special locations, we'll see where the Spirit leads. Uh, but for now, um, let's go ahead and delve into our scripture today. Our scripture for this morning is, uh, again, from the book of Genesis. And we find ourselves in chapter 3 verses 1 through 11. So uh, let's see where, where the text takes us this morning. Uh, Genesis chapter 3, 1 through 11, and I'm reading from the Common English Bible. The snake was the most intelligent of all the wild animals that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say you shouldn't eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the snake, We may eat the fruit of the garden trees, but not the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden. God said, Don't eat from it and don't touch it or you'll die. The snake said to the woman, You won't die. God knows that on that day you eat from it, you will see clearly and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. The woman saw that the tree was beautiful with delicious food and that the tree would provide wisdom. So she took some of its fruit and ate it. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. They both saw clearly and knew that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made garments for themselves. During the day's cool evening breeze, they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the Lord God in the middle of the garden trees. The Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? The man replied, I heard your sound in the garden. I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Did you eat from the tree which I commanded you not to eat? Such good scripture this morning. Such good scripture. A story that uh, I'm sure we've heard multiple, multiple times. All right. So our focus verse for this morning, the one we're going to spend in some time in prayer with, is uh, verse 8. So uh, let's still our hearts. Let's focus our spirits on God. And uh, let's come to the Lord in a mindset of prayer as we ponder and ponder on his word. Let us pray. Genesis chapter 3, verse 8, from the King James Version. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden.
from the New Revised Standard Version. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. From the Common English Bible. During that day's cool evening breeze, they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden, and the man and his wife hid themselves from the Lord God in the middle of the garden trees. From the New Living Translation. When the cool evening breezes were blowing, the man and his wife heard the Lord God walking about in the garden. So they hid from the Lord God among the trees. And from the message translation, when they heard the sound of God strolling in the garden in the evening breeze, the man and his wife hid in the trees of the garden, hid from God. Amen. Amen. So we're continuing to use the Renew My Heart book. And the, the one for today is entitled Losing the Life of God. When Adam disobeyed God and ate of the forbidden fruit, he gave immediate proof of, of his separation from God. He showed by his behavior that the love of God was extinguished in his soul which was now alienated from the life of God. He was now under the power of severe fear, so that he fled from the presence of the Lord. So little did he retain even the knowledge of God, who fills the heaven and earth, that he tried to hide himself among the trees in the garden. He had lost both the knowledge and love of God, without the image of God could not subsist. He was therefore deprived of the image at the same time and became unholy as well as unhappy. Instead of having the image of God, he had sunk into pride and self-will, the very image of the devil, and into sensual appetites and desires, the image of the beast. Some may argue that by threatening in that day you shall die refers to the death of the body only. But to affirm this flatly to make God, to make God a liar, for it is evident Adam did not die in this sense in that day. He lived another 900 or more years. Unless we impeach the veracity of God, 
This death must be understood of spiritual death, the loss of life and the image of God. Some, uh, some pretty good words from, from Wesley this morning. And uh, I thought I would share with you uh, the notes from our Common English Bible, uh, Study Bible. And there's, there's a bunch of them, so uh, just, just hold on. <laughs> Snake imagery in the ancient world credited serpents with special knowledge of death perhaps because of the serpent, serpent's ability to produce venom or its ability to renew itself by shedding off of its own skin. Early Jewish and Christian interpreters identified the serpent as, as Satan. John Wesley also assur, assumes the serpent was Satan, who was a liar from the beginning, mixing truth and falsehood together. The serpent's question was no innocent conversation starter, but rather exaggerates and turns inside out the details of God's command, pretending astonishment and making the command appear unreasonable. The woman's response is resolute and correcting, yet the serpent's challenge has raised the possibility of an alternative view, perhaps reflected in her, in her slight uh, addiction, addition, don't touch it. The insidious turn in the conversation in which the serpent directly challenges God's authority and character using half-truths to distort the whole truth. Their eyes will indeed be open and they will certainly gain knowledge, but the whole truth has been clouded by misinformation. The misdeed is infectious and communal. The guilt is shared by both. Once their eyes are open, their innocence is revocably lost. So that's some pretty good notes this morning. Yeah. So as I was um, reading the text this morning, the Spirit um, moved me to the words in, uh, I want to say it was verse 5. Uh, the message put it this way. You won't die. God knows from that moment you eat from the tree, you'll see really what is going on. You'll be just like God, knowing everything, ranging all the way from good to evil. It was those thoughts, that idea that we would be like God, knowing all things and that our eyes would be open. It made me wonder uh, since we've been talking about this born again uh, type type thing over the last few days, it made me wonder that how when we're quote unquote born again, and when we really start growing in our faith, that we really start to see the evil that is around the world, that we start to put off the things of the world and focus on the things of God, and it makes me wonder. How, how we really start seeing the issues that are in the world because our focus is turning towards loving God and loving each other. And when we start to do that, we really start to see all of the, the evil that is in the world. And uh, that's just, uh, it just makes me want to, it makes me, makes me ponder, um, is this, is this the way is this the way that God really wants us to be? Does God, um, in, in opening our eyes as we grow in our faith, is this, the, is this what God truly wants for us? That we do see all of the evils in the world and that we, uh, we do start taking action against them. And I think that's, I think that's where, where the scripture is leading us today. That, uh, you know, through Adam and Eve, they, they saw how naked they were. And through our, our, um, our salvation, we can come closer, back closer to God and, um, and be who we are. 
So I feel like I'm rambling this morning, so we'll just cut this one here. And uh, I hope uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed our time together. We will uh, we'll pick it up on occasion through the summer, and definitely pick it up uh, full force. It's probably the mid part, tail end of August kind of thing. So we'll just uh, we'll see where the spirits leading us at that point. But uh, I hope to see you guys in worship either eight o'clock here on Facebook on Sunday morning or at 9.30 or at Rousey's or 11 o'clock at Beaverdam. Uh, but for now, let's, uh, let's close with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, we, we thank you for this, for this day. We thank you for all of, all of the blessings that you pour out upon us each day. And God, most importantly, we thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus. Because it is through that gift that we can truly see the love that you have for us. It's through that gift that we can truly see all of the ways that, um, that we need to live, that we need to, to strive to be like. And God, we just we ask that you, um, that you help us along the way, that you point us in the right direction, or that you put people in our, in our paths that will point us in the right direction. And God, we also ask that you use us, that you use us to, uh, to carry out your will here on earth, that you use us to help bring others to knowing you, and that you use us to help others walk through whatever difficulties they are facing. Because God, the important thing is for us to do life together with our focus on you, and our focus on caring for one another. God, we ask that you be with all of those who are um, suffering today, those who are going through medical procedures and maybe doctor's appointments or tests or, or, or might be uh, suffering some, some, from, some, uh, from just challenges that life throws at us. We ask that you inspire and guide us and that you keep us safe and that you help us um, see our relationship with you in a clearer and new way. God, we ask for all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, friends, remember that this is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Go in peace, y'all. Bye for now.